Teams and players of TikTok, do you want an incredibly powerful magic item that actually base your next campaign around? Well, let me introduce you to the Moonblade. The Moonblade picks its owner. You don't get to pick it. And since it gets to pick its owner, that's why you can base the campaign around getting the Moonblade or having the Moonblade and doing what it wants. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, what does the Moonblade want? Why would it pick me of all people? Well, to attune to the Moonblade, it has to see that you have a pure heart for elven kind and you're trying to better elven kind. And that's its whole purpose. If it senses just a little bit of hate, just the smallest amount for elven kind in your heart or soul, bam, you can not attune to it. And there's a huge backlash for not attuning to it and being rejected by the sword. So the sword rejected me. What happens? For the next 24 hours, you have disadvantage on literally everything. Disadvantage on attack rolls, disadvantage on saving throws, disadvantage on ability checks. It really sucks to be rejected by the sword. So don't even try to attune if you know you don't have a pure heart. So I know you're wondering, why would it risk that? How is this sword so good that it would risk 24 hours of disadvantage on literally everything because the sword tells me, no, I'm not pure of heart? Well, the benefits aren't that great. Aren't that great to start. Because it's based on how many owners it has, how good it is. The first person to attune the sword only gives it a plus one. That's it. But if that person dies, it will have to attune to a new master. And the new master then gets to add a new rune, which is based on this chart. On a 1 to 40, you get a plus 1 to the sword, and this going maximum to a plus 3. And let's say you roll a 1 to 40 against the new owner, bam, can't go above that, re-roll on the chart. So it just gets better than that. 41 to 80, you gain some minor property from the DMG, could be pretty useful, could be kind of meh. Depends what your DM goes with or what you roll. Here's where it starts to get really interesting. An 81 to an 82 gives it the finesse feature. An 83 to an 84 gives it the throne feature. An 85 to an 86 gives it the defender, which is amazing. An 87 to a 90 gives it a crit on a 20 or a 19. 10% chance to crit. 91 to 92 gives you a plus D6 every time you hit. 93 to 94 gives you against a certain type of creature, such as like a dragon or a fiend or something. 1D6 extra elemental damage, so like fire, acid, lightning. 95 to 96 basically makes a flashbang on your sword where it emits bright light that everyone within 30 feet has to make a DC 15 constitution saving throw, and if they fail, then they're blinded for one minute. 97 to 98 makes it so it basically becomes a ring of storing on top of all the other properties. A 99 allows you to summon a companion of an elf shadow next to you, which is just a shadow in the monster manual, but still a powerful ally. And 100 on the dot makes it a vorpal sword. So this is typically why the sword is passed around generation to generation and accumulates more runes is because it has some kind of ideal and then that family will keep that ideal alive, such as the art, the beauty, the war the strength, improving Elvenkind whatever way the sword does deem that your bloodline will. Which leads it to its major flaw, is that once it picks a wielder, it believes that wielder is the right person. Even if the wielder doesn't think so, it's themselves, because this sword's so narcissistic that it is correct, that it believes that you are its true owner and will refuse to be wielded by anyone else until its current master is dead. Also, fun fact about the Moonblade, uh, because of all these flaws that it picks a master and you're stuck with it for life, no, you literally are stuck with it for life. Once you attune to it, you cannot unattune to it until you die. Or the Moonblade's destroyed. Those are seriously the only two ways it picks you and then clings on to you like some kind of energy vampire. So this is clearly the coolest sword ever because it can be a Vorpal Defender plus three finesse throwing weapon that can summon a shadow and has a ring of storing built into it. Best sword ever, but, but why? How does this work into the campaign? Well, I'll tell you. Maybe it's not for your party. Maybe it's for Yelvin Hero. This legendary hero is the one who needs the sword. Your party has been tasked with going to get this sword. So, your party eventually finds the sword, brings it back, hands it to the guy, and then the sword says, No, I think someone else in the party is more worthy of wielding it. And then the party is now tasked with killing the Demon King or whatever is threatening Elven Kine because the sword says you're worthy. And the sword gets to pick who's worthy and that'd be a great twist for the DM to throw in there. Technically, you have to be an elf or half-elf to attune to the sword also. I kind of threw that out the window when I ran this in a campaign and just let whoever try to attune to it. Every single party member was ejected, funny enough, except for the half-elf because he's the only one who actually gave a shit about the elves. And it's because everyone else was too chaotic to use the damn sword to save the elves.
Also, DMs, just note by having this sword in your campaign, your party might fight over it because it is the coolest sword ever. And it usually starts with 1d6 plus 1 rune. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I would personally suggest picking them rather than just rolling them on the spot because you don't want to roll them on the spot and then it becomes like the most overpowered thing ever because you're like, oh, the player rolled a d6 plus a 1, they get 7 properties. Okay, now it's a plus 3 Defender Vorpal Finesse Sword and it just breaks your campaign because it's way too powerful for anything you've ever purchased prepared because you weren't prepared to have just a plus three vorpal that's stronger than your average plus three vorpal in the campaign and yes other players will get jealous they're gonna want cool weapons too it's like hey why, why does this one character get the coolest sword ever why are they now the chosen one and you have to keep that in mind that if you give this to a player they are basically a chosen one of the elven kind so keep that in mind whoever gets this sword is the chosen one and other people will potentially be jealous. So make sure the players understand this beforehand that they're all still equal. Because that's what d and is about. You don't want one person being the chosen one. Now it could be really cool for a subplot where that one person is the main character of that subplot because they're the only elf in the group. And then maybe you can do something about dwarves afterwards for your dwarf and give them like uh, the Belt of Dwarven Kind and that uh, super OP dwarf hammer. I can't remember the name of it right now. So that's a Moonblade. Stick around if you want to hear about more cool magic items and cursed items in the future because cursed items are my favorite items.